everybody. Welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. We've been talking to Robert Moss, a New York Times bestseller author, and we we're talking about his most recent book, Growing Big Dreams, Manifesting Your Heart's Desire Through 12 Secrets of the Imagination. And what I wanted to talk about are the different types of dreams, because you did such a beautiful job in your book and describing, you know, recurring dreams, precognition dreams, forwarding, you know, how you can use your dreams to problem solve, healing, portal of the God state, learning about subtle body. So like what, that's basically a highlight summary of what you have in your book, but what do you think are the different kinds of dreams out there so we can kind of get a sense of how to make most out of the dreams that we have, or in some ways interpret them. I, I've, I've had literally, I have dreams where someone is screaming in my head and it feels like some um, godlike figure or some figure of, of higher wisdom than me is like repeating the same phrase over and over and over and over again to me. So I'll remember. And then I wake up going, oh, right, all right already. And then I forget the phrase altogether. Um, so I've had this kind of um, portal to God state. Um, I've had su- um, ener- energetic healings where I literally, I do so much uh, meditation and Kriya yoga. I wake up, I'm like literally shaking in bed and I'm like, energy is moving through me and I'm getting healings while I'm sleeping. Um, but tell us a little bit more about other kinds of things, or if you have any insight about my weird experiences, I'd love to hear them too. Well, maybe if your experience is mine, I'm being brought awake, I might already be conscious of it, being, being brought fully awake to the fact that I have a physical body, but I also have other energetic vehicles, it's not just the physical, and they impact the physical body. Mm-hmm. So if my physical body is in this state of shaking, it's probably because something has been going on with my energy bodies, one or several of my energy bodies, which is impacting the physical body. I mean, there are different ways of understanding this thing. The Eastern systems are often quite clear about there are several vehicles of consciousness and energy at which the physical body is only the growth system most material. You know, in, in, in sort of Western terms, there's a dense energy body, there's an astral body which travels in dreams, for example, and there might be subtle vehicles beyond those. So whether it's dreams or whether it's your somatic experience coming back from the night or from meditation, I would say that these are ways of beginning to understand the true anatomy of energy and spirit, which Mm -hmm. goes beyond the physical. One of the things that people don't seem to understand about dreams and other experiences is that they might, on the one hand, be out-of-body experiences in the sense that you are traveling beyond your physical body. You're traveling beyond your body and your brain. You're going somewhere else, but they're not necessarily entirely disembodied experiences because you might be traveling in a subtle body. Mm. And what in the subtle energy body might redound upon, might impact the physical body. So that's one thing to think about with mm. dreams. When I first started talking about my dreams and visions of the ancient Mohawk clan mother to uh, a faith keeper, a leader, an elder of that group of peoples, the Six Nations of the Longhouse, he said to me, oh, you had some visits and you received some visitations. He was saying in a very old fashioned, very clear, very pragmatic way, some of the things that go on in dreaming as we go traveling, we also receive visitations. So if the voice is coming to me in my bed in the space where I am, our ancestors would have regarded that as a visitation. Mm. Maybe from a god or spirit being, maybe from an ancestor, maybe Mm. from that. I, I don't know who it is unless I have interaction with that person. So these are some of the possibilities of dreaming which have actually been well understood by everybody except modern Western psychologists, because this is the way that ordinary dreamers or and their dream shamans have understood things since way back. When we look at you know dreams on a typical day or night, okay, we're going to say, see some dreams that are just what Freud called day residue dreams. Clearly, this is a commentary on how fast you eat the spicy pizza. And there's nothing much more to be said about it, but there really are dreams like that. The whole okay. life- the wild goat fish dreams, which means right. the fish was off, you're eating it too fast in the wrong season, throw it away. It's a trash dream. There are right. trash dreams, but I would never be in a hurry to throw something away as a, as a trash dream without looking at it carefully mm. and see if there's something here that can guide me. I would say that the dreams that I look at, that I experience myself and that I hear from other people, and I see thousands of dream reports all the yeah. time from other people, uh, fall into three broad bands of experience. Let's say they're relatively literalistic, realistic dreams, which seem to be glimpses of things that might lie ahead on the roads of life, or things happening at a distance. You check in on grandma, you see what's going to happen around that corner on the road at that intersection next Tuesday. 
So realis realistic, uh, literalistic dreams, some of them are quite boring and dull. It's like what the work situation is going to be tomorrow. Some of them dramatic and mobilizing because that could be a real car crash. You better avoid it if it is. So mm. the realistic See, precognition, kind of this kind of thing. Yep. Pick up your early warning because once you recognize that you can see the future in this way, you don't have to let it play out if you can figure out a clever way to apply the information, clarify it, and then use it. You can avoid that car crash. I've avoided car crashes that would have been fatal, to my certain knowledge, three times. By oh. staying with the dream, clarifying the information, avoiding that date of death on the road, you can do it too. So then secondly, there are the symbolic dreams, and sometimes these feel like theatrical productions. You know, it's a symbolism, symbolic feature, or like, you know, floats going by in the Macy's Thanksgiving parade or something or other. There are all these floats, all these figures, sometimes cartoonish, sometimes like soap opera, sometimes like some, some reality TV show. Uh, but sometimes taking us into strange areas we can't in initially figure out because a symbol takes you from what you already know or think you know to something you don't yet quite know. Mm -hmm. Takes you to something you don't yet. You've got to figure it out because you're being invited to expand your understanding. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our dreams are symbolic in that positive sense that our dream source is not trying to hide things from us. It's trying to make us think more, open our minds, go further. And then there are the dreams, and these for me in some ways are the most interesting, that are the experiences of another reality. The dreams in which you've gone somewhere that is not your regular life, your regular world. It might be a parallel life. Some people find mm. when they write dreams over a period of time that they're going back again and again and again to a situation where they're not in their regular life. They're married to someone else or not married to anyone. They're doing a different line of work. They're living in a different house. And the story goes on and on and on. And it's not all that exotic. It's just different. It's just not the life you're leading now. It's a life where you made different choices. Or it's clearly somewhere very different in the sense that, you know, you're not going to go and live in Montenegro or somewhere, but you're going to the castle in Montenegro night after night or Atlantis or, or the, a garden behind the moon. So, you know, you begin to notice that dreams are not alike. I mean, there are different kinds of dreams and they have to be approached in different ways. And whatever kind of dream it is, CJ, we must do better than interpret them. It's not just about turning a dream experience that can be rich and strange and wonderful or terrifying into some set of analytical words that leech it of its energy and leave it as a completely empty toothpaste tube with nothing left in there. We, 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 we have to do something to bring juice and joy and energy. For, and story, story, let's not forget the sheer power of it getting a new story every night you pay attention, large or small. That's fun in itself. Mm. Mm. Okay, got it. So recurring dreams like you, and those are the other kind that you talked about, which was the bear dream for you, um, forewarning. Um, and then I, 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 yeah, so I think we've talked about those enough. I wanted to talk to you about, you had said that right now you've been talking to a lot of people who are dreaming during COVID. And I've noticed that with these, with my coaching practice, people are going through some huge transitory, like transition where their their souls are talking to them and they're yeah. creating action. What are you finding with your yeah. dream workshops? Yeah. Yes, well, I'm finding a lot more people are a lot more open to dreaming in general. I mean, they have more time at home for one thing. Uh, they like to travel and they're not traveling much in ordinary life, but they're beginning to notice whether they have the words for it yet or not, but they're traveling in dreams, they're having experience with dreams, they're meeting people and doing things in their dreams. And although some of the dreams of COVID are sad and tragic, like the situation, some of them are about, you know, threats on the road of life and don't go to that crowded place or getting in touch with grandma because she's on her last gasp and you can't even go and hug her. There are dreams of that kind of many of them. But I also notice that by and large, there are a lot of dreams which are wholly positive and a relief and a welcome escape in the good sense. You're taking a vacation in your dreams, even if you're not taking a real vacation mm. in physical life. Quite a lot of the dreams are about death, but most of the dreams about death that are shared with me in this COVID period are not somber. They're not funereal. They're dreams in which you discover, if you didn't know already, there's life beyond this life. There are good places mm. to be and go. Life goes on in one world or another. And you might see someone who is close to you who is over there now who wants you to know she's okay, she's doing fine. Or you might see that I'm getting such shivers. Or you might notice that people that you know who passed on maybe some time ago have been preparing a new place for someone who will be joining them. That might mm -hmm. be you, it probably is not you. It might be someone else you know about. You learn from these, as I say, that life goes on in any world. And you learn or remember something terribly important, which I have no theology about these things, but I think this is terribly important to know. 
there is life beyond this life. You don't have to buy into any particular version of religion. Just let's learn that the soul has a history that predates the birth of this body and has a history that continues after leaving this body. Once you know that, you know what, CJ? Apart from everything else, it enables you to look at life with a little bit more humor and perspective, with a bit of a sense of a divine comedy. That might mm. be this has just been such a wonderful and enriching conversation. Thank you so My much. Pleasure. May your best dreams come true. Yes, we've been talking to Robert Moss, and he's been talking about his book, Growing Big Dreams, Manifesting Your Heart's Desires Through 12 Secrets of the Imagination. Make sure to find him on eastwestbookshop.com, where he's going to be doing a presentation. Thank you so much. Okay, 